Hey what's up guys, Cyclos here and today I want to discuss a bit with you about the new RDX 30 series for laptops. And we have announced earlier this week the 3060, 3070 and 3080, but today we'll focus on the RTX 3070. And the reason behind this video is that there are some leaks since two weeks that pops on the web and you know, those leaks are very are not not very encouraging at all. So if you want to buy a new gaming laptop, make sure to watch all this video. You may find some interesting information and that could change your mind. So we're going to take here uh, a first example on videocards.com about an HP Armin using the RTX 3070 mobile. And this laptop scores 110,000 points on Geek Geekbench 5 on the OpenCL test. And how does this example show an ASUS Strix with the Ryzen 7 uh, 58,000 and the RTX 3070 scoring only 112,000 points in the same benchmark so um, th this number wasn't possible to me when I saw it because uh, my Alienware M17 R3 with stock settings with the RTX 2070 Super non max Q scores 101,000 points uh, and more if I just give it a little overclock to the RTX 2070 Super, it scores 105,000 points. So it, it brings the RTX 2070 Super on that particular laptop only behind from 9 to 6% of an RTX 2070 3070 mobile. Um, Videocards.com, where the leak sits, um, say that this. 110,000 score is then for a max Q variant of the RTX 3070 since the clock speed was slower than announced by Nvidia. And I think that in this case, grading or buying an expensive 3070 series is worthless. Like 6%. Yeah. But I don't even know how it is possible to have double the number of CUDA cores on the 3070. Um, versus the 2070 Super and only have 6% more performances. Even if it's a max Q version, you know, like, uh, we're changing generation and on this particular test, the results are just bad. Um, we can take here the desktop RDX 3070, which score 137,000 points on Geekbench 5, you know, the same benchmark, and the desktop 3070s have 5,888 CUDA cores, which is 13% more cores than the RTX 3070 mobile, which has 5,120. And we can speculate a little bit if we use some proportionality. Um, you know, the, we use that 13% difference to calculate the score of an RTX 3070 would be a max P version and not the max Q. It would score like 119 points, 119,000 points on Geekbench 5 uh, on the OpenCL score. So it may not be relevant to do this, but since CUDA cores, you know, here doesn't really mean the thing uh, on the RTX laptop because, you know, we have double the, <laughs> the CUDA cores but 6% difference. But if this is true, it means that the RTX 3070 Max P would be only 6% more powerful than the uh, RTX 3070 Max Q. And, you know, only 12% more powerful at the end than the RTX 2070 Super overclock. And that's not over because uh, in the NVIDIA presentation during the CES, that was like on Tuesday, um, they said that the RTX um, 3070 was able to produce 90 FPS in ultra settings at 1440p. We don't know exactly which game, but just after that, they revealed the RTX 3080 laptop and say that this world fastest mobile GPU was only capable of producing 10 more FPS than the 3070. Uh, wait, 10 FPS plus, like, why? There's a thousand more CUDA cores for 10 FPS? Oh, well, uh, yeah, I don't know, but if we look the RTX 3070 that has two times the CUDA cores of an RTX 2070 and only makes like 6 to 10 to 12 percent more performances, then yeah, maybe 10 FPS plus finally makes sense. But yeah, to, to conclude this little video, um, of course, this is an early speculation based on the leaks. Uh, I'm, I'm an enthusiast of this kind of tech world, but 
We need to wait for reviews in the game benchmark and I really advise you to wait before uh, before you, you rush on the pre-orders, you know, before you rush to buy them because you may be disappointed by the performances. Uh, and if, if those speculations came to be true, uh, the most interesting buy would be to get the last year RTX 2020 Super or 2080 Super for cheaper. Except if you want that new Ryzen chip that came with it. But yeah, I, I really hope that those new 30 series will perform better in um, in the, the gaming benchmark. But for now, on the Geekbench Core OpenCL, well, that's that's not very promising. Yeah. All right. So that's all for me today. Let me know what you think in the comments so we can discuss about that new thing. And I'll see you guys next time.